안녕하세요. Hello and welcome to Kathleen's Korean Food Challenge. Hi, I'm Kathleen Choi, a Korean chef now living in beautiful California. I travel in search of other chefs to challenge them in creating some of my favorite Korean recipes for the first time after I taste their signature dishes. My basket is packed with my magic five Korean ingredients and I'm off to find my next challenger on this episode of Kathleen's Korean Food Challenge. 안녕하세요. Hello, I'm Kathleen. Welcome to the show. Today's recipe is probably one of Korean people's top three favorite foods to eat. 고등어 조림, which is mackerel stew in English. But I realized that mackerel isn't a popular fish to eat in the US since it's used primarily as a bait to catch larger, more expensive fish. Also because it is an oily fish with a strong fishy odor, it can be challenging and difficult to cook for most people. But not for me, I grew up eating mackerel stew all my life and I happen to have my own secret family recipe that I'm about to share with you. First, it's very important to pick fresh mackerel from the market. You can tell by the eyes, they're bright and clear. The gills should be clean and the skin moist. The fish should be somewhat firm and not floppy. It's very important that before you cook the fish, rinse it well under cold water and then pat it dry with the paper towel. The best thing about mackerel is that it is relatively very inexpensive compared to most fish or seafood, but it comes with great nutritional value. Also, it's important that you boil the mackerel in the pot without the lid on and make sure you don't overcook it. Otherwise, you'll end up with really fishy and salty mackerel stew. First of all, I need to cut up the mackerel in three to four pieces. I'm adding the head and all into the pot. Let's start off by slicing up some daikon radish and potatoes. Half a brown onion. And some green onions. Putgochu, which is Korean uh, green chili. We'll need to start making the stew sauce. So in a bowl, combine five tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce, one tablespoon of sesame oil, two tablespoons of my homemade anchovy and sea kelp base. You can buy this from the Korean market if there's one nearby, but if not, don't worry about it. You don't need to add that. Next, Add a quarter cup of white wine. In this case, I'm using my favorite ginseng herbal wine. Next, two tablespoons of freshly minced ginger. One tablespoon of minced garlic. A tablespoon of white grape vinegar. Tablespoon of Tuenjang paste. Two tablespoons of organic cane sugar. I like my stew spicy, so I'm gonna add some chili powder and a tablespoon of gochujang sauce into the mix. Next, we'll heat up a deep pot, drizzle some olive oil, and then layer with sliced bacon radish and potatoes. Pour half the sauce over with a cup of water. Let it boil for about 10 to 15 minutes until the potatoes and bacon radish cook and soften. Next, lower the heat to medium-low and add the sliced mackerel inside. Pour the 
rest of the sauce over and make sure you baste the mackerel with the sauce. And there's enough liquid in the pot to cover up and cook the ingredients. Lastly, add the sliced onion, green onion, and putkochu, which is Korean uh, green chili on top, and simmer for an additional minute or two. 고등어 조림 is all ready. I'm gonna plate it. The daikon radish and potatoes are cooked al dente. And on top of that, I'll put the macro pieces, just a couple. Remember to not stir it too much in the pot because it'll break the meat. Some more fresh green onion. And a couple of pieces of pukkochu, green pepper. Here we have delicious kodungo chorim. You can't tell it's a fish stew because it smells just so wonderful. Now all you need it is a bowl of steamed rice and you're good to go. It's time for me to visit my next Korean food challenger, Chef Brian Hursty at the Blue Water Grill and challenge him to make kodungao chorim. From what I hear, Chef Brian just added a couple of Korean dishes on the menu. Maybe it is his way of telling me that he is ready to meet my Korean food challenge. Voted one of the best seafood restaurants in Southern California, Blue Water Grill is a casual and fun, family-styled seafood restaurant. Allow me. Oh, hey, Sean. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Wow. I was just uh, buying a little basil. Thai basil for my friend over uh -huh. here. <laughs> Come on in. Okay. Welcome to Blue Water Grill. Thank you. Wow. Look at this. I could smell something really good from outside the door. Oh, we have almost everything from under the ocean here at Blue Water Grill. Um, from fresh shellfish to sashimi grade ahi tuna, um, lobster, clams, you, you name it. If it's under the sea, we serve it and we know what to do with it. It looks really fresh and I love, so I love oysters and seafood's my favorite. I came to the right place. Me too, yeah, you sure did. <laughs> These are a couple of our more Asian-inspired dishes. Yes. We do a lot of fusion cooking here, and this is our ahi poke. Wow. And it's uh, our ahi poke martini, and then of course mm, we garnish beautiful. with a little edible orchid. And uh, oh. th these are really wonderful. This is our, um, we call them sea bonbons. Sea bonbons. Because yes. they're so delicious, and they're a sashimi-grade scallop. Oh. Yeah. Served raw in the half shell. We just garnish it with all these little appointments, and not only are they beautiful, they're delicious. And so they have a little ponzu, and a little wasabi aioli. Oh. A little of the masago and a little bit of the seaweed salad yes. and all kind of comes together in your mouth. Just so delicious. It's already mouth, my mouth is watering. I can I start? Sure. How do I try get one? This? Just pop it right in. Oh, okay. It's like, like an oyster. Sugar, huh? As opposed to an oyster, which is kind of hard to get somebody to try an oyster for the first time. These are very lady friendly, I found. Sure. And I knew I had something when the shells would never come back into the kitchen on the plate. And I picture them hanging on patios all across LA and Orange County. On, and they're so beautiful, the shells alone. And again, um, it's the appetizing wow. to look like, look at and even more to eat. Very fresh, number yeah. one. The sweetness of the scallop and, and the texture's great. I just love sashimi. Beautiful shell, me too. Mm, beautiful. Got some avocado, which I love. Cucumber. English cucumber, some teardrop tomatoes, a little sesame oil, a little chili oil. Hundreds of pounds of tuna wheat. You seared it a little on the outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. We use a little bit of that um, togarashi seasoning, oh. which is kind of like a Japanese Cajun mm. spice, if people don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah I can taste that uh, spice, like a peppery spice. One of the high, mostly highly acclaimed seafood dishes and popular, plus encompassing 
Almost everything that we have great to offer is Chipino. Basically, the seafood is, is what Chipino is all about. It can be m many different kinds of seafood. So we're gonna start out with our fish, because the fish is gonna take the longest to cook. And we're just gonna get that sauteing just a little bit. Our clams. And our black mussels. We're just gonna agitate them a little bit. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and add on our garlic. And that's kind of a, a by taste thing. I like a lot. Fresh oregano and green bell pepper. These kind of build the flavors to our cheap pinot. So we're just gonna get that stuff going a little bit. You can see our clams are starting to cook. This all goes very quickly. The white wine. And we actually are gonna add a touch of red wine as well. Just a little Cabernet. At this point, we're gonna add a little bit of our house-made spicy uh, marinara sauce. And we're gonna add our scallops and our shrimp, which just take the least time to cook. And we're gonna add a little bit of crab crop for just a couple minutes. Few minutes, we have chipino. Now we're gonna plate our chipino. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the uh, crab legs so I can handle the rest of it without making a big mess. And I'm just gonna very carefully, just little by little, I'm gonna stack it in there. We wanna be able to see all that wonderful shellfish. The rest of it, I'm just gonna slide it on in. So at this point, our shellfish and our fish should all be cooked to perfection. And then we just kind of arrange the shells and then kind of use the crab legs as our garnish. Nice hot crab meat. Just a little garnish, a little couple lemons. Bang, chipino. Gaza, how about that? Here we have our chipino. Seafood, one thing about seafood is it cooks very quickly, generally. Certain seafoods take longer than others, but most mm. seafood takes 10, 12 wow. minutes to cook. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. You can smell the fresh oregano. And, oregano? You know, of course, we, we gotta keep it, keep it tidy. <laughs> that red bib. sauce, <laughs> bibs okay. important. Allow me. <laughs> Beat me. <laughs> you dress way too pretty, dude. This is the way. This is the way you eat it. And then of course you've got your cracker for the crab, your cocktail fork for picking the shellfish. And this is for afterwards. Oh my tools here. Compliment uh -huh. you know, a glass of pina. Wow. For me, of course, as well. Good bottle. Mm, that's light. Is it like Pinot Noir? Yeah, it's Pinot Noir. Enjoy. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you so much. I look a little awkward with my bit <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was cute. Favorite scallops? The trick with handling scallops is it should be just barely cooked through. And the quality of the scallops to begin with has a lot to do with it. But. Mm. The shooter would work good too, but this is phenomenal. Great simple yeah. seafood. I'll try a shellfish. Yeah, one of our wonderful Clam. vanilla clams. There it is. I love manila clams. They have this little like juice pocket in them when you bite into them and they're just so moist. You can moist. taste the wine. Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but it's good. Yeah, it all balances together. Yeah, good balance. So if I do it my way, this is my tool. I don't need forks or anything. With that crab, it, you won't, you won't need any other tools. There you go. And the meat Ooh, just pops right look out. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. That's the mark of good crab. Okay. Delicious. I call that Ophelia on steroids because most snow crab is about half mm. that size. Wow. And delicious, isn't it? It's delicious. So sweet. Oh, thank you so much. My I'm pleasure. gonna finish this in a little bit while you are doing the challenge. Yes. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the basket. Yeah? Are you ready? I think so. Okay, so let me get my basket ready. Be. All right, let's do it. Okay, now. Okay. Yeah, here's the food coming to you, first of all. Mmm, I smell seafood. Yes. Mm. Yeah, the whole thing. That's good. What mm. can you make of it? Um. 
<laughs> There's filleted fish. I think I get onions, uh, fish stock, a little sweetness. I almost think I taste fennel. Fennel? Maybe fennel. Mmm, it's delicious. Absolutely delicious. Good. And do you, can you guess what kind of seafood it is? Fish? Yeah, I can see, I can tell, but I, I think it's mackerel. Mackerol! Do you like mackerel? like mackerel? I love mackerel. No wonder. I eat mackerel in the sushi bar. Oh, I no eat wonder. pickled mackerel. I picked the right kind then. Delicious. Now mackerel is so oily and flavorful. Yes, very. Good fish. And I'll uh, show you the my ingredient basket. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. It's going to be go. have skin and be slightly slimy. Let's see. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there's the fire. It's been chilling, yes. Yeah, so. It's a whole mackerel. Hello. I used to catch these uh, Santa Monica when I was a kid. Oh, really? Yeah. Root. Daikon? Yes, daikon radish. And then I saw these chilies. They're s slightly hot, but very mild usually. Usually we just dip it in chili sauce and eat it. Yeah, you can get some scallions, some potato. A little bit of chili paste. Yeah, the chili paste. What you know the Korean chili here? paste. The huh? Korean chili paste. I have. Yes, I buy it by the gallon. Chili pepper. Uh, it's the chili yeah. pepper that we use to season yeah. that spicy kimchi. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, I think I can handle that. And the rest, you can use any of your ingredients. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take this fish down. We'll take the head and the tail off, and then we're just going to kind of fillet it. And then we're going to use the bones for uh, our stock and then the filet for our stew. So this is all good stuff here. We're going to break that down. And then we're going to go ahead and start a st making a little bit of a fish stock here. And we're going to start cooking down those bones a little bit. At the same time, we're going to add some things. Um, in this case, we're going to add a little bit of fennel, just a bulb. And uh, this is going to be where we kind of add our own little appointments to it. Fennel is a root vegetable. It's kind of got a slight anise flavor. And it goes great in a fume, which is a fish stock. And then I've got a little bit of Maui onion here, just to give it a little bit of a twist. And some celery. Now I know, Kathleen, you said you like it hot. So I got a little uh, chili paste here, and I know you have your chilies, but you know that's Kathleen's chili and that's mine, you know. So we're gonna meet somewhere in the middle there. That's chili on steroids again. So we're gonna put a little celery. This is just gonna build the essence of our stock, and then I have one other trick up my sleeve. I have a little fume here. And this is a beautiful fish stock we made by starting with 50 pounds of white fish bones. Now that we're bringing that up, we're gonna go ahead and add in our potatoes and our eggplant and our daikon. And as soon as that comes to a simmer, we're gonna add in our filet fish. And the last thing we're gonna add in is the heat. Um, but we can go ahead and add a little bit of this in now. Well, these are the, the hot, spice, Korean spice that is to be used in kimchi. And we don't want to go too crazy with it. You can always make it hotter, but you can't take the heat away. Yeah, now there's different ways to cut them. In this case, we're going to cut, cut them in kind of one inch sticks, little strips. I'm going to leave it kind of, she had hers cut down a little smaller. I'm going to kind of leave this in filet. So probably just going to cut it in half for my stew. Alrighty. Let's see, oh, looks like it's coming together nice here. Nice and hearty looking. Mmm. Yeah. I think Kathleen's gonna love it. I'm gonna go ahead and add our filet fish in, and at the same time, I'm gonna remove the head and the bones out of here. We're gonna go ahead and add our chilies. Kathleen does like it hot. We're gonna add a little bit of sambal olek, which is chili paste, not too much. 
kind of sticky Korean ketchup here. A little vinegar and chili. And we're just gonna let that simmer for about three, four minutes, and I think we will be ready to serve. That, oh my, I like it already. Make a little filet, a little shrimp. And of course, you saw we incorporated a little fennel in here. And of course, we didn't use the tops, but the, the beauty of the, the tops are make a beautiful garnish. So we're gonna go ahead and do a little fennel garnish. A little sprig there on the side. And we're gonna incorporate our green onions just on top. Go ahead and throw those in there. And uh, last but not least, I just wanna put a little bit of lemon with there. Well, I've got a little accompaniment plate to go with our uh, stew. Uh, I've got a little uh, wakame salad, which is a seaweed salad, and then I have um, kimchi, kimchi. <laughs> and wow. my, my homemade cucumber uh, salad for my um, that I use in my uh, Korean style tacos, and, and a little daikon sprout and lime, wow. which is very good. Yeah, traditional accompaniment good. with yes. the seafood. I think it'll uh, complement it well. Okay. Very good. I know. And well, of course, okay. you have your accompaniments. I need yes, to, to match up. <laughs> now, why don't you uh, try out the food and I'll taste your food? Okay, sounds good. Looks absolutely delicious. It's kind of a stew here as well. Little rice. Mm. Mm. Spicy? Mm. Actually, I was afraid it would be too spicy, but it's not at all. No? Not yet, no. It's got a good, good body to it? Yeah, good body. Not too spicy. Great. I cheated with the shrimp because they're so pretty. That too, and then it brings out the flavor. Mm -hmm. mm. For the stock. The potatoes and the daikon root are so tender and delicious. We have one Korean, Korean item that we're serving presently, and I'm trying to develop a second one. Okay. We've been working with glass noodles and, and some wow. bulgogi beef. Oh, bulgogi beef. Marinated my own with the, you know, the Asian pear and... Um, soy sesame Great. but I haven't quite got that one ready yet okay. but I do have the Korean tacos and I think you'll, you'll be I think Korean it's happy style hour, tacos. Right? it oh, is happy speaking hour. of happy hour and here we go there's when, the Korean talk tacos. about timing huh oh, wow so the, yeah this is our um, Korean style tacos and wow. we do the Calbee marinated short rib with a cor soft corn tortilla mm -hmm. and then we do a mixture of a cabbage mix with cilantro and uh, daikon Ooh. carrot and then my uh, Newly innovated cucumber salad with all. Oh, I gotta try that. That looks so good. Not bad, huh? There's a carby. Mm. Very good. Did you make that here? My recipe. Good job. I'm responsible <laughs> and uh, I'm the developing character for all of our recipes, yeah. My pleasure. It's been a wonderful journey. And thank you so much for watching. And until next time, take care. And as I always say, life's delicious. Life's delicious. So taste it. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks for watching. And be sure to join me on my next Korean food challenge.